We are. But we are excited to welcome Ms. Shannon Day. Hey. Hi, how are you? Perfect timing. Awesome. I'm glad to be here. How are you, beautiful? Hi. I'm great. Thank you so much for joining us, Shannon. You are so beautiful. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, can I get right into it with you? Let's do it. That's what we're here for. It. Okay. All right, lovely. So you star in all black. Is it black or is it B okay? I want to make sure. All black. Okay, that's what I thought. You star in all black, uh, which I was telling our friends, formerly known as UMC, um, is their new series, Terra Lake Drive. Oh my God, girl, this, this one, this is it right here. This is the one. Uh, you star as Samantha. Um, and so for those who are interested in exploring this new series, can you tell us a little bit more about it? And then also a little bit more about the character that you play. Definitely. So the show, the premise of the show is about a single mother who, who has a teenage son who's quite mm -hmm. defiant. Um, and in the midst of the pandemic, which is also written into this show, mm -hmm. uh, she takes her, her family or her son and she relocates from Atlanta uh, or from Baltimore to Atlanta to start a new life for herself. Um, I think she just needs to be released from the confines of the pandemic and the effects that it's had on herself and her family. Um, and I play the single mother, Samantha Jones, accompanied by my son, uh, AJ, who's played by uh, Danielle Hall Hansley. Um, and it's just a thriller. It's a psychological thriller that just takes you on a ride and leaves you on the feet. It does. You all have to check it out. Trust me, you will not regret it. It is so good. Um, now, we don't want to reveal too much, um, but we can say that the underlying theme of this series is mental health and illness. Um, mental health awareness is something that is becoming more and more prevalent in the Black community. Um, and with that being said, was creating awareness around mental health and illness, was that a factor for you when you were choosing this role? Absolutely. There are many relevant that were written into the script. Uh, it was brilliantly written by Jerry Lamoth and Kawana Marie. Um, but that definitely had a big role in, in, in you know, me taking the opportunity. Obviously, mental health, especially in the, in the Black community, to me is sort of looked at as a moral defect. I think a lot of people are ashamed to sort of get help. And because of systemic racism, I mean, there's really no culturally sensitive treatments or even, you know, correct representation in terms of healthcare or the providers that, that, they, that we all seek. And so to be a part of that in terms of raising awareness was an absolute blessing. Wow, that's, that's beautiful. I love the fact that you, you know, seriously consider all of those things before taking on this role. I love that that's so important to you. I really do. Um, so speaking of, what would you say was the biggest challenge on taking on this role? The biggest challenge, to be honest, for me, it was beside the, besides, it wasn't the work. For me, it was getting a call on Thursday to, you know, get the little birdie in my ear to get my interest and then being on a flight on Saturday and working in Atlanta a day later. I mean, it yeah. was kind of not having much time to prepare. But the great thing about that was, you know, I felt that my life was somewhat parallel to Samantha Jones. And it was really mm -hmm. easy to sort of like dive in and really come and absorb uh, the circumstances that were given to me. So that was definitely a blessing. Very interesting. I love that, the parallel there. So that your situation actually helped develop, you know, the character a little bit more. <laughs> Completely. It was an effortless switch. It was so awesome. Awesome. Okay, so what would you say is the biggest misconception about your character, Samantha? Mm, biggest misconception... You know, I would say the independence of my character. And not to say that Samantha is not strong and independent, but I do think that uh, she was forced because of the circumstances, specifically because of the pandemic, to sort of like get up and leave and sort of search outwards for, uh, you know, the support. I feel like a lot of people gave her that sort of um, the, ben the benefit of the doubt of just being super independent. But truly, she depended on her husband. She depended on her family. And she depended on the concept of truly finding more support in her life, which is what I think sparked even more interest on her relationship between her and Corey. I like that. That's a good answer because I mean, I feel like oftentimes, especially as black women, 
I'm gonna go there. You know, yeah. we tend to be uh, overestimated in the because of the amount of independence that we seem to have when really we need a rock just as much as the next person. Absolutely. So I love that. Absolutely. Um, now, there is a scene where Samantha is upset at the administration for diagnosing her son, AJ, because of his behavior in class. Um, that scene really triggered something for me because I actually have a special needs son with autism, and I can't imagine someone just diagnosing him with something because of his behavior, you know, especially when you're not, you know, a doctor, that's not your field. Do you think that your character's argument was valid? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How the hell are you gonna say that about my son? You know, honestly, I, I was called in, first of all, I think the call was inappropriate and at a horrible time, they called me at work, which was very, <laughs> the, the way it was written in was just it completely, there was no boundaries, it was inappropriate. And then when I was called in, I was under the impression, or when Sam was called in, she was under the impression that she was going to speak to his science teacher. Right. And I feel like truly felt ambushed to be met with a psychologist telling her things about her son that uh, I feel like was in, in the wrong setting and completely out of line. So that was a really interesting scene because it yeah. ramped me up. And just like you said, I do not believe that that was the place for that conversation to be had. Yes, that was, that was interesting. I love that they even wrote that into the script and I loved your reaction. Um, now, what would you say is your favorite line of dialogue from Tara Lake Drive? I know we're throwing them at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go, it has to be, I'll be on that vitamin D. Oh. So it has to be that the song. I mean, come on, it's so come ridiculous. On. Can we just give it up for Amir Wyndham, the music supervisor <laughs> on the show, for having to write that legendary piece of work? <laughs> so good, I love that. I, I actually was not expecting that. I love, I love that answer. So good, so real. It's so real. <laughs> so now, Let's talk about this. You star opposite not only Lamont, welcome, okay, but also Malik Yoba, two amazing powerhouse actors in this industry. Um, now, Gerard, or I'm sorry, what was the experience like working with such phenomenal actors? I mean, it's a blessing. It's a blessing whenever you have an excellent cast and you're supported by that amount of talent because, uh, you know, to be honest, they, they were really into their craft. They were all about, I mean, what was written was obviously there, but they were all about developing the character and what goes on, I would say, between the lines, which is sort of my mm -hmm. approach when I act as well. So being able to work with two people that sort of had that same energy and was able to bring that energy on and off set was a blessing for me. And it created an instant chemistry for us. So it didn't take time to sort of, you know, to break through barriers in order for us to create a chemistry that wasn't organic. It was already there. And then furthermore, to be supported by a director like Jerry, who gave us so much freedom creatively was a, a privilege to say the least. I mean, he really let us play ball, which is why I feel like some magic was made during that season. That's excellent. I was actually going to ask you about the creator, Jerry, and what it was like to work with him. It was just freeing. It was freeing. He was always, you know, he was incorporating um, certain elements of the character that as actors we brought to the table, which made our characters even stronger, which to me, and this is what I said to Jerry as well, is that you have a feeling of being attached to the characters from the beginning. You build a relationship with them and you want them to thrive. You want them to win throughout, throughout the season. So I feel like he did a brilliant job at that. Him and his partner, Kawana Marie, were excellent. Awesome. It's always amazing when you have an amazing team yes. to work with and standing behind you. Absolutely. I mean, even when you have a good cast and you have good creators, I mean, there are so many people that go into really creating a successful piece of work. I mean, a lot of people um, use the metaphor of it being sort of like a baby, you know, and it has to be nurtured and it takes a community. You know that as a mother, I'm a mother as well. And it takes a community to be able to, you know, have your baby thrive and have it win. You are right, girl. I'm feeling you. I'm feeling these answers. You're just so down to earth and you're giving Thank us the real. I love it. Um, you. Now, UMC just became all black. Uh, and it is really becoming a force for uh, pretty much all of the black cinema fans. I mean, that's pretty much one of the major channels that we look to now. Mm -hmm. So how does it feel to be part of this change and evolution in the black cinema platform? <laughs> 
I mean, I mean, you said it. There really aren't too many alleys or or platforms for Black creators to come together and to really thrive, you know, and to just have it in this sort of commonplace is mm -hmm. is truly a, a blessing. So mm -hmm. to see them evolve and to go from that sort of sitcom style and also have their just like you know independent sort of films and television to see them evolve with the sort of formula that's now feeding into series is something else. And I feel privileged too because. You know, to a lot of viewers, I'm sort of new talent. And so for them to create a platform for people like me to show up and really carry a show is nothing short of a blessing. That it, You're right. You're absolutely right. And I love the fact that as a Black community, we now have so many different outlets that we can mm -hmm. kind of turn to for entertainment. I love yes. that. I love that you're part of that. Yes. Are there any shows that you would actually want to be a part of? whether it's on the All Black Network or, or just any of the, of the other platforms that have now become available to us? You know, I, I find myself, to be honest, I, <laughs> how about this? Put it this way, because this, uh -huh. this, is, this right here, it might be contrived, but I'm going to be real. <laughs> um, how about Tara Lake Drive season two? Okay. Can we get a season two? <laughs> it's already done. What do you mean? You know, that's so what I'm saying. That's what I look forward to. Right. I, I love that. That, is, <laughs> that takes it. That takes the cake. That's an amazing answer. Absolutely. Tara Lake Drive season two. Yes. 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 That's what I'm here for. I'm here for it. <laughs> so now, a lot of us were actually introduced to you through uh, Tyler Perry, uh, Medea's Big Happy, or Medea's Big Happy Family. And you know what, when I started watching Tara like, Drive, I didn't realize at first that that was you from <laughs> this movie that I've seen a million times and loved so much. I'm like, oh, that's my girl from Happy, yeah. <laughs> Happy Family. So now in that film, you also had the opportunity to play along some pretty major, you know, phenomenal actors from Tyler Perry himself to Loretta Devine to uh, the late, great, beautiful soul, Natalie Dizelle. Um, what was that experience like for you, working alongside, first of all, that phenomenal cast, and then also being part of something that Tyler Perry has created? Uh, well, first I'll say that it was an inspiration to see Tyler in action. His productions mm -hmm. are like a well-oiled machine because he wears many hats. Um, you know, he's in front of and behind the camera and in, in the same production on the same day and just really pumps out really sort of um, uh, quality material and very quickly. And so it was super inspiring. He is definitely a force to be reckoned with. And the talent that he has around him is also something that I was super inspired by. I grew up on Natalie. I grew up on Loretta Devine. I grew up on these people. So to right. be able to actually have them, especially earlier on in my career, this is what, 10 years ago, earlier on in my career, it was something that was like, wow, okay, I'm here and I'm playing ball. Um, I felt just, I have to say, super privileged to be able to work alongside Natalie. When I heard the news, I was devastated. Um, you know, I was blessed and fortunate enough to have her in my life, you know, beyond the film. And she would reach out to me and we created a, you know, an awesome bond and friendship. She had this sort of quality about her that made you just feel like instant family. Like, what's up, sis? Yeah. So there is just, there's that vibe that will always have a special place in my heart. And she will be greatly, greatly missed. Oh, that's beautiful. We, we definitely have so much respect for her as an actress, as a human being. She was truly a, a beautiful soul. Absolutely. So. To be honest, for me, if you ask me, she was underrated. I mean, there were so many opportunities for her to even do more work. She was so talented. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I mean. It didn't really take much going back to really being surrounded by, uh, you know, an amazing cast and really quality, yeah. talented people. You don't, have, you don't have to do as much. You show up and there's already this organic chemistry because people show up ready to play. And she had that play spirit just down, just so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Honestly, thank you. Um, now, are you currently working on any passion projects that you'd like to share with us? Well, my passion project is actually a, a self-care line, a skincare line that I have been working on. It's called Anointed Co. Um, awesome. it's a, it's a, I'm all about holistic healing and health care, and it's a plant-based, crystal-infused uh, skincare line. You had me at Anointed, and now yes. it's crystal-infused? Yes. Oh, I'm about to be the face of your new... Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's absolutely beautiful and it's healing. We've had so many great reviews. So many people love it. And each product, it has a sort of affirmation ritual that coincides with the product. So when you use it, you can sort of manifest even further, you know, high vibrations and healing. So it's a really awesome concept. I went into business with my sister, Heidi Marie, and you can find it at Anointed Company or at our website on uh, www.anointedco.com. So that's what I've been doing on my spare time in the meantime. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Like I, I, I genuinely, aside from like the interview, I'm excited as a, as a consumer because awesome. that is right up my alley. I love it. I love the fact that you have to, uh, the uh, rituals to kind of go along with the products. They're crystal infused, anointed co. I mean, just speaking it. I just, I love it. I will definitely check it out. Is there an Instagram page or Facebook? Yes, yeah, it's at Anointed Company. You know, we launched uh, November, sort of mid to late November, and so it's pretty new, but it's at Anointed Company, and it's it's awesome. It, the products speak for themselves. We've actually been pretty successful just, you know, rolling things out. So another another amazing, bountiful blessing. Oh, so many blessings coming your way, girl. Wow. You. you guys, make sure you follow Anointed Co. on Instagram, Facebook. Check out the website. I know I will probably as soon as we finish. I'm going to follow, and I can't wait to Oh, Thank I love you, that. Lara. Thank you. Now, absolutely. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite questions. Um, it's about giving each other our flowers because that's something that I feel like it started off as a trend. Oh, give someone so their flowers. They deserve it. Yes. But when you really think about it, it, it is true. It has so much truth to it. We need to give each other our flowers while we're still here, not after we passed away. We need to show each other that we honor, love, and respect each other while we're here on earth. So if there was anyone that you could give their flowers to today, who would that person be for you and why? Wow. <laughs> you know what? I would say, and, and I, can't even, I can't even focus on one person. For me right now, especially in the world with everything that we're going, going through, it would be to the black women in our community, the ones who are working tirelessly to just get equal benefit, to get equal treatment, to get equal representation, the ones who are mothering, you know, children and the young kings and queens of the future to be able to give opportunity to those around us. We all know what it's like to be in the black community and, and also to have that extra layer of sort of struggling to be seen as a woman, to me, is a topic that's very sensitive and close to my heart. So to all my sisters, I give flowers, endless amounts of flowers and respect too. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. It's probably like one of my top, I shouldn't say favorite answers, but <laughs> I just, I love that. You know, I'm, I just, I love that so much because you're absolutely right. I mean, black women, especially now, it's almost like there's just something that clicks like yeah. globally with, within us. And we're all almost on the same page. And it's such a beautiful thing to see the sisterhood among black women all over the world. So thank you so much. As a black woman, I thank you. And you deserve your flowers as well. You are beautiful, talented, so smart. I mean, I admire you. So thank you so much for sharing with us. You've been phenomenal. Thank you so much. I appreciate that beautiful blessings to you and yours. This was awesome. It was an honor. Thank you. Oh, it's been a pleasure. And before you leave, can you yeah. make sure that you tell us all one more time where we can, or when and where we can tune in to Terra Lake Drive and then also follow you on social media? All right. Well, Terra Lake Drive is on demand right now. So obviously we've gone from UMC to All Black. It's a network you can get out of Amazon Prime, Roku, Apple TV. There are other avenues and platforms that have this. You just have to download the app. I think you get a one week free trial. And then from then it's, I think, five ninety nine for the month. Um, so definitely get your trial to All Black and look forward to new content, including Tara Lake Drive. And other than that, um, you can follow me on Instagram at Shane Kane. <laughs> That's S-H-A-N-K-A-N-E. Find me there or, like I said, follow my company at Anointed Company. Oh, and we will. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Like she said, make sure you're tuning in to Terra Lick Drive. It is now on demand. You can watch it anytime. And make sure that you're also following us here on Black Cinema Now for more exciting and fun interviews just like this one. Thank you so much again, love. And we do hope you enjoy your evening. My pleasure. You too. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.